Dominican nurses will join their colleagues across the world today to observe International Nurses Day. A number of events have been planned in Dominica, including a workshop at the Fortune Hotel commencing at 8.30 this morning. President of the Dominican Nurses Association, Rosie Felix, says the topic, Nurses Leading Chronic Care, is top on the agenda. Traditionally, the Dominican Nurses Association joined nurses all over the world to celebrate International Nurses Day. This year, we observe the day for workshop and um, at the Fort Young Hotel, where we'll have begin a workshop from 8.30 and go on till 1.00. Uh, a key topic in our workshop this time around is uh, nurses leading chronic care. And this theme um, has been chosen by the International Council of Nurses every year. The council um, identifies a theme that we can work with. Um, you must have heard, you know, I mean, in recent time, a lot of talk about the prevention and management of chronic non-communicable diseases and the nurses uh, partnering with doctors, of course, are very involved in the prevention and management of uh, non-communicable um, chronic diseases. So we're going to focus on that. But since this is not our only interest, we're going to do look at other areas like um, financial management. You know, like everybody else, um, nurses have financial challenges. So we're going to look at that area as well. And um, from time to time, we need a little motivational uh, talk. So our key presenter is going to be um, Ms. Priscilla Prevost. President of the Dominican Nurses Association, Rosie Felix. A top environmentalist in Dominica says the spirit of mobilization for production is absent where food security is concerned in the country. Director of the Environmental Coordinating Unit, Lloyd Pascal, says funds to improve the standard of food security are greatly needed. Well, for, for starters, we need to, to be able to mobilize. I think the, the, the spirit of mobilization is absent. We need to use the tradition of the Kudme system of bringing people together, like um, when we have the 4th of November where people come together to to um, build roads, especially roads in the countryside, build bus stops and um, you know, some maybe fix a schoolyard and so on. But we have to be able to mobilize hands, many hands, to, to, to produce because that is what is absent in this country. The, 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 the question of mobilization for production is not there. So we have to find a way that we can collect, uh, get some money, raise some money and purchase what it is needed. Food that should be cooked on the spot, food and meat. No. no, as I told you, the food security that they talk about in Dominica is having enough money to go into the supermarkets and the supermarkets having enough tin stuff st and, and so on stored in their own storage. So that can, for me, it cannot be food security. Director of the Environmental Coordinating Unit, Lloyd Pascal. A biography on one of Dominica's most notable leaders titled Mamo, the Life and Times of Dame Mary Eugenia Charles is expected to be launched this week. The book, written by Gabriel Christian, will be launched at the University of the West Indies Open Campus on Thursday. The event is being co-hosted by the Dominica Academy of Arts and Sciences. Born on May 15, 1919, date of the book launch marks the 91st anniversary of her birth. Still in more news this morning, one advocate for sustainable development, Mark Douglas, has responded to suggestions by former Caribbean diplomat Sir Ronald Sanders for Dominica to review its membership at the International Whaling Commission. Sanders questioned whether the island's membership in the commission is necessary. When our government sent people to the International Whaling Commission meetings, nobody tells the country that they're sending them or, or tells them how much money they're spending on it or why they're doing it. And, uh, and therefore, people don't have an understanding of why it is we are members of the International Whaling Commission or how much money we're spending on it or why we're doing it. On the other hand, nobody is, uh, there's been an effective propaganda campaign by the Japanese and others, uh, particularly those who support them in this region. Uh, and usually those are people who go to International Whaling Commission meetings um, to suggest that somehow the Caribbean is badly affected by, by the existence of whales because whales, for instance, eat fish is one of the claims that they make and therefore the, 
because whales eat fish, it's depriving us of food. And that is totally untrue. The whales that come into the Caribbean eat krill, not fish. And, uh, and when they come to the Caribbean, they're coming at the time when they are not feeding, but are looking to birth their, their calves. So, you know, this whole argument is a, is a, a non-starter, and it is an argument that has been put forward by those who support the Japanese for reasons best known to themselves. Former Caribbean diplomat Sir Ronald Sanders. But Douglas says the Japanese are committed to the principle of the sustainable use of whales. Yeah, what, what Sir Ronald Sanders fails to say when he speaks of commercial whaling is that the Jap- Japanese are committed to the principle of the sustainable use. Sustainable use calls for the harvesting of living resources at levels which max- maximize the availability of the resource to the present generation without in any way jeopardizing its use and enjoyment to future generations. The Japanese, I mean, they've had a running battle with the environmentalists for, for, for decades now. Basically, uh, in 1946, we have the International Whaling Commission was formed. And from 1986, there has been a moratorium on, on all commercial whaling because certain whale species were endangered. Now, at the present time, there are certain species of whales, like the minke whale um, and the sperm whale as well, which, has, which have recovered and which are in abundant supply. And what the Japanese are asking for, and also the Norwegians and the Icelandic people, they're saying that the species which are in abundant supply, we want to be able to harvest on a sustainable basis those particular species. It's not a, a, a policy of extermination. When they speak of commercial whaling, you, one sort of um, uninitiated, uninitiated observer would believe that it was some mass extermination of whales, which would be ridiculous, because what it would mean is that you would fail to have the resource for your uh, future use and enjoyment. He says Dominica's support for the sustainable use does not go against the country's national interest. So we, we are told that it's somehow against our, our national interests for us to support the Japanese on the sustainably used principle. I mean, that, that is really extraordinary. Um, Dominica has a wildlife management program uh, under which our wildlife, like our crabs, or maniku, aguti, uh, and previously, of course, our, um, our crapo and so are all protected. Um, and you, you have a, a, a season when they're allowed to to reproduce and build up the stock, and then you have a season which allows hunting. And if that is properly managed, you can have this, this, um, these items for, or, or, or in our diet indefinitely. I mean, my Pampo used to say that she, she, she lived on, on, on crabs, on, on seaweed, and, and local, and tater, and, and dome, and, and those um, river fish um, very extensively in her youth. And we know that these things are good for longevity. Now, we continue to enjoy those particular um, um, items in our local diet, and, and this will continue because we have a um, wildlife management program. If you, if you say that there's no way you can harvest whales, even on a sustainable basis, you're virtually saying that um, we, we cannot harvest fish because, I mean, um, if you support this, our support for the sustainable use principle in, in this case, we'll, if it's a contradiction of our nature island status, then logically we should abandon our current policy on fishing. You know what I mean? Because we, we are not fishing. When we fish our tuna or our kawang or, or um, dolphin or, or, or redfish, you know, I mean, you, you don't do it in a manner to exterminate. You do it in a manner that is sustainable. That's one advocate for sustainable development in Dominica, Mark Douglas. And the second annual bird festival is set to get on the way again in Dominica on Thursday with a whistle like a bird competition. The competition will provide persons who are skilled in initiating the songs and calls of Dominican birds with other opportunity to come up against each other in a friendly competitive setting. The whistle like a bird competition forms part of the 2010 Caribbean Endemic Birds Festival and is being organized by the Forestry, Wildlife and Parks Divisions of the Ministry of Agriculture and forestry. This is one of the activities that uh, the Forestry Division is planning uh, or has planned for the Caribbean Endemic Goods Festival this year. Um, this is the second year running.